Welcome to Indie Resources' fourth video on Socket.io and Node.js, and our ninth video on building a web-based game using HTML5 and the Impact Engine. Um, I went back and, and kind of rewrote a couple things because, for one thing, if if you notice in the other videos, the the server was taking a lot of data and sending a lot of data. It was on an interval basis, and it wasn't the most, it wasn't the best thing in the world. So, I went back and rewrote a lot of things in here. Um, I, I basically I went ahead and wrote it all in advance, got it all ready, and then I figured we'd step back through it all. That way you could see the end result first, and then we can kind of walk through it, and then we can start building things slowly. But I didn't want to take a lot of time slowly walking through it through it all as we built it. Instead, we can just spend the next couple of videos just talking about what I've got so far. Um, the one thing before we continue that I want everybody to understand is that I, this is not how to build my game. This is how to build your game. If you don't like the way I put in the mouse clicks, if you don't like this, this that's not what this video is are, are about. It's just to get you started on Node, get you started on these web sockets, and get you started on making your own game and just take it from wherever you want. I'm not trying to to, to a lot of things in this you might find wrong this is not the best ways to do it that's not what this is about this is about getting you kinda of caught up really quickly so you can get on your own and, and get your own game made and find your own ways of doing it so that's definitely not what I'm trying to do here so with that said <clears throat> let's look what we have so far I kinda of changed a couple things well, let's start the server real quick get it up and going and I've already got some clients up here let's just refresh and let's refresh um, if you notice, I'm actually clicking the mouse now. I'm not using my WASD keys. I kind of, I kind of wanted to move away from that. Now, the nice thing about this is, if you notice, the server's running. Nothing's happening. These players are just standing there, and nothing is being sent to the server right now. It's just sitting there. If I click, and let me, let me move over here. If I click, it sends one piece of data every time I click. The client decides where everything's going beyond that and if you notice that's all I'm doing now one thing another thing I added was if you hold down the Z key you can actually shoot and it will send more data but it's only sending one so if I don't do anything nothing's happening Whoop, let me pull this over here it's not sending anything so this this definitely helps with the server data that we're, that we're going through here it's not sending anything anymore but you will see the actual client do a couple you know just a just kind of a heartbeat make sure everybody's still connected make sure everything's still going but other than that you know and even if you notice like if I click uh, let me get these guys back to where they were now if you notice every now and then these players might get a little out of sync I'm sure that's the question you're asking well if, if the clients doing everything if all it's doing is sending a click and then the client deals with the rest of it what happens when they get a little out of sync? I have it to where every so many clicks it resync resyncs the players. Um, now in this, there's still a couple animation issues that I'm working with. There's still other little things that we're going to get working. But if you notice, you could get a massive amount of players on here, and because it's only sending that one tick, and you can kind of see what it's sending. It's sending the player move, um, just telling it to run that function, and then the arguments are just the where he, where it clicked, and of course the name of the player. Um, and that's all, that's all it's really sending now. Of course, with the with the bullets, it's going to be sending something else. But if you notice, the bullets are coming up now. Also, the other thing. Let me uh, move this guy up real quick. This guy's shooting. You notice they, they're both the collisions happening. The collision is happening on each client. Each client is deciding where the collision is happening. And because of the because of the shoot distance is the same, the player distance is the same. It's gonna it's gonna sync up the, exactly the same. Now. I know a lot, you know, I know one concern is, well, security. What happens, you know, if somebody tries to, to hack that bullet or, or because it's being done on the client side, it's, it's hackable. Well, the, the point we're going to, the thing we're going to do here is it won't matter because only the client who shot the bullet is the only one that's going to actually be accessing any of the class data of what we're building on the server as far as each item. The, okay, so if this client shoots right here, this client over here has is not going to do any kind of um, it's not going to send any data back saying hey there was a collision there hey this is what's going to happen so it doesn't have access to even get to this class only the person who shot originally and that bullet is going to go and be and actually be run on the server and then the server is going to handle it but as far as just think of the secondary guy here the client that's just watching the viewer 
he's just mimicking everything that's supposed to happen. So that's all that's really happening. So that's how to. That's the easy way to have the handle kind of, the the client kind of handle all of this this back end stuff or all the stuff that's happening is just send only what only the where what is happening and let each client deal with it on its own. And so far, I haven't run into any sync issues with that. We may run into some later, and then we'll just fix it as we do. But I haven't run into any. And the point is, after so many shoots, after so many movements, resync everything, and it'll fall back into place. Which I just haven't had it come out of sync yet. Um, so a little a little discussion on what's going on here. <clears throat> let's start with our app first. Um, I tell you what, let's actually start with player first because there's some there's some things I added to this that that we need to go over. Um, the one thing I did do is I took some code from the actual impact forms as far as the uh, mouse pointer click. I'm, I didn't want to spend too much time trying to write my own or anything, so um, I did pull this. This You can find this on the actual forms. Um, and I changed a little bit of it to make it my own and to make this work, but um, this actually works really good for now, so it, it's kind of the perfect fit. But all we're doing basically with the player... Um, I'm I'm really going to go over that part later. The one thing I want to show you is okay. We have of course our entity other player that's being created um, like before, and all I'm doing is I'm kind of copying that that the mouse function that's saying hey, hey this is what the mouse is doing. But instead of sending a mouse click, I'm sending the network mouse click. Whatever that other client sent is being sent to this, and that's how. And it's basically just saying the destination X and the destination Y is this, and then it's it's moving that. Now for the bullets, I created an entity bullet, which is the actual client who fired bullet, and all it is is just a standard little bullet, nothing special about it. It's grabbing the angle and it's firing in that angle. Then I created a network bullet that's the actual bullet that's that's um, from the network. So in other words, if another client fires it, this is the one that's created. I separated them so we could keep the the two separate as far as what does damage, uh, what which one's a client, which one's a network. Because the network guy is his his bullet is just there for visual, and that's it. On his side of it, it'll be there for actual what it needs to be there. But other than that, it's just going to run and, and fire off. And that that also helps if you got a bunch of people firing. You don't want a whole bunch of processes going on, which right now it's kind of empty because we haven't put anything in there. But if only the client's bullet is 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 really processing the hits and the other than the collision of dying, um, whatever's processing how much damage was done, everything. It's a lot easier on each client when you only have one type of bullet actually needing to make those kind of calculations. Um, so that's kind of how those are created. The index. Um, I did add quite a fit, uh, quite a bit to. So let's talk about now movement, and we'll start with the player. <clears throat> and you may have seen this on the forum. I'm not sure, and may have tried to use this mouse, but if if not, I'm explaining it anyway. Okay, in the update function of your actual player, it's going to be looking for. It's going to be checking your mouse angle, which is just uh, all it's doing is getting your input x and y, and it's it's just doing a simple uh, angle calculation right here there's there's no real reason for me to even go into description of what it's doing um, what's important is we have this if input pressed attack which is our mouse button and the input state is not um, and I it says minor bullet but it's minor bullet so what I was going to do is the Z key was going to be a minor bullet the X was going to be like a bigger bullet and then C and then they would have bullets that they could fire or whatever um, if, if it's not being pressed in other words if you're just ready to move um, I have this net timer here because I'm actually checking for, and, and I haven't put the resync code in yet, but it's going to, to go in there. Now, the one thing, the, before we go into this, the one thing I do want to show you is I actually did, have, I do have creatures working, by the way. Um, if we take this off, I've got them blocked out right now because I wasn't ready for them, but this is on the app, so we're going to have to restart the server to get this done, and just so we don't have any kind of weird thing happen, I'm going to refresh these so they're kind of stuck so if we refresh here refresh here and we walk down here there's oh, there's actually a creature running around down here now if you notice he's running the same on each guy so he's being sent and here comes another one there's no animation going right now we still got to get that done I didn't get that done yet but it's pretty simple all we got to do is have it detect where he's moving and run that animation but as you can see they're all kind of synced in together and they're just random movement is all I got it set on right now. I don't have them to attack or anything like that. They're just doing a random movement. And you can see that it's we need to randomize the actual ticks of this so it looks more it looks more real, but for right now I just have it on a standard tick. So we do have creatures coming in and I will say uh, the neat thing about this, I tell you what, let's go ahead and do this right now. Let's 
Let me show you an example before we move on to the next video and actually start getting into more of the code than what we did before. Um, let's go to our app. And I don't know how long this is going to last, but let's make a new one spawn every second. And yeah, let's just do that. And let's see, I want to make sure that uh, creature count. There's actually, I have a, 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 I need to set a variable for this. I meant to do this and I didn't get it done. But I have actually have a creature count that will keep. Um, let me let me find where I'm at here. It will here it is. If creature count right now, I'm only doing a max of ten, so I'm going to change that to four hundred for now, or four thousand, four or four hundred. In other words, it's not going to let more than ten creatures spawn, and I just did that to keep from things going haywire when I was testing it. But um, we're going to go ahead and just run a little test, and hopefully it won't blow up. <coughs> Now, even with this stuff going on, the spawning. Now, this we're going to fix. Um, this is a lot of data that we're sending. Um, we're going to we're going to scrunch up that data a little bit. But um, so we got one one spawn in every second, and you'll start to see. Now, this is sending more data than the actual player data is sending. So this will tell you. This will kind of give an example of how many players you can hold before things start getting crazy. Um, now this is localhost, so it's, it's going to be a little different. But you'll start to see that we get quite a few as time goes by. I'm not sure why the why they're just walking straight up and down. That's kind of strange, unless they're just being stuck in the um, stuck in some kind of loop, or they're stuck up against this barricade here and they're not moving anywhere. But it's kind of weird that they're not moving left and right because it is randomized, which I'll go over in a minute. But you can see, I mean, how many ever seconds this has been, that's how many creatures we got out. It's quite a few. And things are just, things are running perfectly smooth still. There's no delay whatsoever. Things are running just normal. And we've probably got, by now, at least 40 or 50. So things are still looking good. So anyway, let's go ahead and just kill that out. Refresh. Refresh. You notice how they, they die because the servers quit telling them to move. So I'll, we'll, we'll get started on the code and what's going on here in the next video.